Now that we've had an overview of some of the basic types of bearings, we need to talk about how bearings can fail. We need to know how they can fail so that we can design systems that use bearings so they don't fail. We're going to go through a number of different ways that bearings can fail. One of the first ways, and most obvious, is lack of lubrication. For example, if a transmission runs out of transmission fluid that lubricates the bearings, this is something that can happen. So if we look at the small scale here, this is a bearing surface, and what happens when we run out of lubrication is adhesion between the metal surfaces. We get metal on metal contact and then little pieces of the surface due to this adhesion can come off and leave this rough surface. And if we go long enough without lubrication then we can have complete catastrophic failure of a bearing. Here's one example of a bearing that failed because of lack of lubrication. It's possible also for bearings to fail not because of lack of lubrication but because of too much lubricant. For example, if we're using grease to lubricate bearings, if there's too much grease in a bearing, it can cause a lot of resistance. The grease can get churned up by the rollers of the bearing and this can actually cause uh, a lot of it can generate a lot of heat and cause very high temperatures and this high temperature can then cause bearings to fail. One of the most common ways for bearings to fail is through fatigue and this is actually going to be the main focus of the lecture here is on predicting or understanding failure from fatigue. So when the surface is fatigued by repeated contact and force from the rollers, then little pieces of the surface can break off. And this is what we call pitting. So here's a little bit closer view of pitting from fatigue. Another possibility is if we operate a bearing at a speed that's higher than it's supposed to, or if we have very large accelerations involved, then we can see some damage in the bearing as well. And you might wonder, well, why would this cause problems? Here's one example. If we have very sudden stops or starts with the bearing, then there are significant inertial forces on the rollers and the cage, and this is the kind of damage that can happen when we have very sudden stops and starts. Okay, so we've talked about lack of lubrication, too much lubrication, pitting from fatigue, excessive speed or acceleration. Another type of failure mode is from overloading. For example, if we apply enough radial force to a bearing that its surfaces deform plastically, then that can also damage the bearing. So let's focus on fatigue failure. So initially, we get surface pitting. And when that happens, bearings can be very noisy. If you've ever driven a car that has wheel bearings that are on their way out, you might know the kind of noise that I'm talking about. Usually it's some kind of moaning sound. And a bearing can actually last for quite a while at that point, but it's hard to predict when it's going to fail completely. So it's usually a good idea to replace bearings once there's some uh, significant sign of surface pitting due to fatigue. So if uh, 
we continue to drive a car that has a wheel bearing that's noisy, eventually one of two things will happen. The wheel bearing could seize, and if that happens, then the, the wheel corresponding to that bearing will lock up, and that could be very dangerous in a, a driving situation. And the other possibility is the, the bearing could essentially disintegrate, and that also could be very dangerous while driving. So it's important to uh, be sure to replace bearings when they have shown signs of significant wear. Another important concept is failure propagation. If we have a bearing in some kind of system that has other mechanical components in it and that bearing starts to wear or if it starts to have surface pitting then the small pieces of metal that break off they can circulate through other parts of the system and cause other kinds of damage. So for example in an automotive engine if we have bits of metal inside the engine it has this a uh, circulatory lubrication system. There's an oil pump that circulates oil through the engine and that can carry these small pieces of metal throughout the engine and cause additional damage. Okay, now we're going to talk a little bit more precisely about what we mean regarding burying life. The idea of bearing life, this is based on fatigue. If we look at all of the other types of fairing besides fatigue, these are all things that can be avoided either by using the bearings properly or designing the system properly. So lack of lubrication that can be avoided, too much lubrication can be avoided, excessive speed and overloading certainly can be avoided. But at some point, all bearings, if we use them long enough, will fail from fatigue. And bearing life, that's usually measured either in rotations, number of rotations, or number of hours at a specific speed. The number of rotations or number of hours that a bearing can go before the first evidence of fatigue. And the way we quantify this first evidence of fatigue is if we see pitting with a surface area greater than one one hundredth of a square inch. The way we quantify bearing life is with this quantity called rating life. And the symbol we usually use for that is L sub 10. Sometimes the symbol B sub 10 is used in some bearing vendor catalog, so you should be aware of that. The way we can understand the L10 life is this is the number of rotations where 90% of bearings will meet or exceed this life. In other words, at the L10 life, we have 90% reliability of the bearings. Figure 11-4 from your textbook shows an important relationship between the life of bearings and the force applied to bearings. There's a very clear relationship here. These circles represent empirical data. On the horizontal axis, we have the log of the bearing life in rotations. And then here on the vertical axis, we have the log of force. And so if we plot this data when bearings fail on a log-log plot, we see there's this clear relationship. So in other words, as we reduce the force, the life of the bearing is increased. And that's really pretty intuitive. Now, because of this observation, we can write a formula that relates force and life. So we can say that force times life in rotations raised to the power of 1 over A is constant. Now, this value of A depends on the type of bearing. It's a constant value. 
and if we have a ball bearing then A is equal to 3. If we have a roller bearing then A is a little bit larger, 10 thirds.